All right, welcome back. In the last video, we integrated our equation one time, and we're going to integrate it again um, to get a second equation. Um, so let me actually erase this little. It's a big eraser, isn't it? I'm going to integrate this equation one more time. So let's actually just let's do this in red. So I'm going to integrate this. I'm going to integrate this. I'm going to integrate this, and I'm going to integrate this. Right. So integral, let's start from the left side. It's going to be ei times dy. Well, the integral of dy dx is just y, right? And that's going to be equal to the integral of this term right here. But I can actually bring out the wl over 4 integral of x squared minus, I can also bring out this w over 6, w over 6 times x or of x cubed. Uh, this should be dx here, this should be a dx here. And then I can actually bring out, well, you know, the integral of a constant is just constant times x, right? So let's just integrate that right away. And constant 1 times x. And so let's actually integrate these two terms. I'm going to get ei times y is equal to wl over 4 times, well, the integral of x squared is x cubed over 3, right? Minus w over 6. And then x cubed, that's x to the fourth over 4, plus c1x. And then I have to add another constant because I integrated um, one more time, right? So now we have these two equations. And these equations will tell us our slope here and our deflection here. But the problem is we have these constant 1 and constant 2 to worry about. So we actually need a way, we need a way to either get rid of them or solve for them. And then plug them back into these equations. I'm going to call, um, I'm going to call this equation 1 right here and then this equation 2. We need a way to figure out uh, what constant 1 is and what constant 2 is. So the best way to do this is actually to look at our diagram up here. We have a couple boundary conditions and boundary conditions all they are are um, at certain points of the beam there's certain um, properties. Uh, meaning at x equals 0, or here at point A, uh, the deflection here is 0. Uh, why? Because there's a pin here. There's, there's a support here, and since there's no support settlement, you know that the deflection at A is equal to 0. Same thing here at B. At x equal L, so when x is equal to the length of the beam, or at point B, you know that the deflection at B is equal to 0. Um, and you also know that if we were to draw this deflected shape, the deflected shape would look something like this, right? You know that at x is equal to L over 2, or at the middle of this span, you know that the slope here is 0. Okay, So we can use a couple of these boundaries to our advantage um, to figure out what our constants are. So the first thing I want to do is uh, let's let me actually rewrite both of the equations we found. Um, equation 1 equation 1, what was equation 1? It was ei dy dx is equal to wlx squared over 4, right, over 4 minus wx cubed over 6 uh, plus c1. And then we had equation 2. And equation 2 was ei times y is equal to wlx cubed over 12 minus wx to the fourth over 24 uh, plus c1x 
plus C2. So let's actually, let's work with, hmm, let's work with equation two first because I know that looking at this diagram at x equals zero, so at the at the very start here, you know that the deflection or y is equal to zero. So we can plug this boundary condition into equation two and figure out what the constants are. So E1 or EI times Y which was zero is equal to WL X which is also zero cubed over twelve minus WX which is zero to the fourth over twenty four uh, plus C1 times zero plus C2. Well this is zero, this is zero, this is zero, this is zero. That means C2 is equal to zero. All right, so equation two um, actually becomes EIY is equal to WLX cubed over 12 minus WX to the fourth, uh, that should be a four, divided by uh, 24. Uh, plus C1x. So equation two became this new equation, and this new equation I'll just call equation uh, three. And in equation three, I'm actually going to plug in another uh, boundary condition to figure out what C1 is. And for this boundary condition, um, I'm going to use at x equal L, or when X is equal to the length of the span, or at point B, you know that the deflection there is also equal to zero, right? And if we plugged in this new boundary condition into equation three, we'll get EI times Y, Y is zero, is equal to WL X cubed, so X is now L, cubed over 12 minus WX to the fourth or L to the fourth over 24 plus C1 times X which is L. Okay so let me actually bring this right here. Let me actually bring this equation over here and let me simplify. So on the left side we have zero, right? And then you have W L to the fourth, right? Because you have an L here and you have an L cube there. Over 12 is equal to W L to the fourth over 24 plus C1 times L. Okay? And, oops, why is this an equal sign? That should be a, a minus sign. So let me get my eraser and make that a minus sign. So it should be WL to the fourth over 12 minus WL to the fourth over 24 plus C1L. So if we continue, we can actually combine these first two terms. We should get zero is equal to, uh, that's, if you combine these two terms, you should get WL to the fourth over 24 plus C1 times L. And if we solved for C1L, we should get negative WL to the fourth over 24 is equal to uh, C1 times L. And if we divide L on both sides, uh, we should get C1 is equal to negative WL cubed over 24. All right, so we can we found the constants. We know that constant one is equal to negative WL cubed over 24 and C2 is um, zero. Um, I'll do this in the next video. In the next video, we'll take these two constants, plug them back into equations one and two, and we should have those two equations and those two equations should give us our slope and our deflection along any point. All right, so see you in the next video.